look at my brother, I go, man, I don't know what's going to happen, but we're either, you know, here we go again. It's either going to be a next step or, you know, we're, you know, we're going under and have to restart and uh, it panned out. So I, um, you know, I, when people are fearful, I think it's the Warren Buffett thing. When people, people are fear, fearful, you know, be greedy when they're greedy, be fearful. And so I see a lot of fear out there. And so people ask me, I'm like, no, we're full steam ahead. I'm just being conservative and not just taking any deal. Welcome to the How to Scale Commercial Real Estate Show. Whether you are an active or passive investor, we'll teach you how to scale your real estate investing business into something big. Ricky Grand is a hybrid real estate investor with a background in portfolio management and a degree in finance. Ricky, welcome to the show. Thanks, Sam. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, Ricky. There are three questions I ask every guest who comes on the show in 90 seconds or less. Can you tell me where did you start? Where are you now? And how did you get there? Yeah, sure thing. So uh, 2016, I was actually working for an investment manager. Um, portfolio management, as, as you mentioned, we managed uh, retirement accounts for pensions, uh, endowments, insurance companies, organizations such as those. Uh, but in 2016, they were going through some changes. I just had my uh, second daughter I was tired of working these you know, 60 plus hour weeks and I uh, needed to change myself. So I joined my brother and we formed a grand real estate investments, uh, 2017 started as just real estate brokers. He'd been doing it for a while and, uh, I brought the investment side with me. So I was working with investors. I hadn't even thought about doing it for myself. Um, I had a handful of those guys and there was one in particular who became a mentor of mine. Our kids actually went to school together. And uh, so, you know, he kind of took me under his wing. I already had the background and I hustled for that guy. And I think we did probably 20 deals over two years that I had found for him. And uh, I learned a bunch along the way. And then uh, end of 2017, my brother and I we were sitting down talking one day and he was like, why aren't we doing this for ourselves? You know, we've been doing all the due diligence, you know, organize even work at times and uh, helping, uh, you know, with uh, figuring out market rent, stuff like that. So we had all of the skill set. Um, so 2019, January 1, we basically reformed our company and we were, we had the conversation. We were like, this is it. We're either going to make it as investors or we're going to be filing for bankruptcy in a year or so. So uh, fast forward a few years and uh, we have uh, 24 units of our own. Uh, and uh, as we kind of went through those that four year period, we uh, picked up different you know skill sets along the way. We started as you know, we're just going to buy and hold. And then we stumbled into a flip when we couldn't get finance for a, a, a manufactured home. Um, so we flipped that and made money. And then we're like, well, let's flip some more properties and then stumbled into wholesaling and wholetailing and um, and then even some Airbnb stuff. So that's kind of where where we're at and you know where we're going is uh, looking to level up. We're renovating a 17 unit apartment complex right now and then uh, looking to do um, some development, some more um, apartments. And uh, I'd really like to, to move towards syndication. So shout out to you know, Gene uh, Trosen, I think that's how you pronounce it, but I bought his book so that I could, uh, you know, learn a little bit more from that guy. And I have some call schedule with some people just to pick their brains a little bit. That's awesome, man. I, I love that. I mean, so in four years, you guys have touched a lot of different parts of the business. In all of that kind of playing in, in different, you're in the commercial real estate sandbox, but in, in touching all these different assets and, and different ways that you can buy and sell and all that, what has become the the thesis or I guess the compelling, um, this is how we're moving forward strategy that you've developed in all of that? Yeah. So, I mean, some of it is, you know, when you've been doing something long enough, you know, you start to look for new things, right? Like, you know, new is always, you know, more interesting, more intriguing, you want to learn. And so, you know, getting into the apartment complex, um, you know, was a, it was a great first step. You know, it's, uh, it was 16 units and we're converting it to a 17. And uh, so that's been a, a fun experience. And then uh, we we're building a duplex right now that's almost done. So kind of just, you know, naturally moving into some of those new opportunities. Uh, then, you know, I really got to thinking just, you know, where do I want to go from here? You know, we've been doing this. Is this, you know, what we want to do long term? You know, basically the business I'm in versus the business I want to be in, mm. and uh, so that's kind of what triggered that. And just you know, wanting to do something that's uh, a little bigger, bring people we know in. I have people asking me all the time how how can they invest with us, and and for the longest time I was like, well, I I don't need any capital, like I'm good, you know. And so that kind of got me to thinking, well, maybe there is a way, you know. And I I knew I'd known about syndications. 
Um, and so I was like, man, now's the time. We've learned a bunch. We have the skill set. You know, we could be a, a you know a general partner on this thing and, and pull it off. And so that was kind of you know, I guess the thesis behind you know making that move into the next level and you know wanting to level up our company so that we could kind of take that next step in the commercial investing world. Absolutely. Is there an asset class that you guys are focusing on? Um, probably multifamily, to be honest, just because, you know, we came from the single family and we've done some, you know, small multi and now the, you know, I, I mean, I call it a, a mid multi since, you know, a lot of these ones are a hundred plus units. Um, but you know, another avenue is more of like the, uh, just a general commercial. We're actually renovating a, a, a building right now to turn it into our office. And so, you know, dabbling in that and wanting to kind of move a little more in that direction, just really kind of be fully submerged in the investment world. Um, that's where I think my brother and I both get our energy where we, it excites us. We love it. And, you know, I wake up every day, like I stop in for a coffee and they're like, happy Friday. I'm like, just another day to me. I'm like, I love what I do. So every day is just, a, you know, another day. What is a hybrid investor? I know you mentioned that there in your bio and, I, and I'm not sure I'm familiar with the term. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, I don't know, you know, who coined it or, or what, but you know, I think a lot of people, even us at the beginning, were thinking, oh, real estate broker and investor, right? You're a hybrid. You can figure out, you know, how to, you know, push this property in one direction or the other. But what we kind of, you know, learned along the way is that it, for us, it was more about exit strategies. So, you know, we started as buy and hold. That was going to be our mantra. That's it, right? That was what my mentor did. And that's where I was like, I saw what he was able to accomplish. So why not, you know, don't recreate the real wheel, which is let's do that. Well, like I said, we stumbled into flipping a property. I stumbled into wholetailing where the property's financeable, but they just want to get out quickly and they're willing to take a discount. You just toss it back on the market and uh, let someone finance and buy it. Um, and then even wholesaling. So as I kind of picked up some of these tools along the way, I realized for us, what made us a hybrid investor is that our exit strategies. We're experts at figuring out you know, how to profit on a project. Um, how to not lose that lead that's come through the system. And I mean, because not every deal, you know, fits that fix and flip, right? If you only have one box to put it in, you're like, oh, it doesn't fit. I guess I'll throw it to the side. So I didn't want to throw away those leads. I'm like, well, maybe there's a different way to make money on these. And so that's where it kind of came from. And it was just probably in the last six months that we really honed in on that. And that really, I think, separates us and, and makes us kind of like niche, I guess, so to speak. When you say experts at exit strategy, is there a deal or is there um, maybe something that comes to mind where you say this is this is a unique situation that everybody else passed on, but yet because we could be experts at, at exit strategies? Yeah. Um, oh, man. The one that really comes to mind is um, we had one. We're, so we're in Eugene, Oregon. We had one in Roseburg, Oregon. Um, the lady is relocating across the country. She's like, she's done. She just wants to get out. And you know, I talked to her and I was like, look, you're going to make more money if you take it to the retail market. This thing is financeable. It only needs a, you know, a couple of things done just to, to clean it, you know, make it clean. Um, and she's like, I get it. I know I don't want to do that. I want to just leave. I want to, I want to close and leave in two weeks. Well, this thing did need some work, but it's an entry level home at a price, you know, that not many people can enter at. Right. I, I think a lot of people that I I know would look at this and go, okay, well, I need to put, you know, forty thousand dollars into this cosmetic update so that I can, you know, extract the value out of it. Well, that's true if you're looking at, you know, you have your your internal rate of return or your set profit margin that you want to make, but it's financeable, right? So we buy it with private money, we just go and clean it out, clean it up a little bit, and then put it back on the market. Basically add this, you know, home to the market that not many people, you know, people are searching for, but, you know, there weren't many homes, you know, at that price point. So being able to put it on the market and say, I'm not going to require a $50,000 profit on a cosmetic flip, hmm. but I'll take $30,000 because I didn't have to do anything to it. I just put it on the market because she wanted the speed and convenience. So having that agility and I mean, we have a pretty good uh, private money source. So it made it affordable to do. We weren't getting beat up on points and fees when we closed. So that allowed us to have that profit margin in there. Whereas I think some of the hard money people, you know, they would have eaten up three points, you know, and the fees. So, you know, that's, that's, I think probably the best example. Got it. No, I think, I think that's great. That's absolutely great. When you, when you look back, maybe the last four or five years, what are some things you feel like you've done really well that other people should emulate? Well, um, 
You know, taking our time, I think, is one of them. I think a lot of people want to go from A to Z without all the work that goes in between, right? Like, uh, you know, I want to I want to go into syndications, but I don't have a background in, in anything investment related. That's a pretty big jump to try to convince people to trust you with their money. Well, we started as brokers. You know, we got into doing some rentals and rehabs and wholesale. You know, so we acquired this skill set. You know, over time and built a network over time, whether it's our partners or, you know, a clientele that we can tap into and just kind of built it over time. So I think not being in a rush, you know, having kind of the foresight to plan where you want to go, but then kind of take the steps to get there versus trying to, you know, take one big giant leap to the finish line. Um, I think that's probably one of the biggest things for us. And then um, putting on a superior product, um, you know, when we put our houses out, when we're, whenever we uh, remodel one, because we live in an area that's not huge, it's, you know, a couple hundred thousand people and all the brokers in town pretty much know us anyway. Um, so that was a big thing to us was putting out a superior product. I didn't mm-hmm. want people to to go into our properties and go, oh, another grand real estate investment, you know, lipstick on a pig deal. <laughs> so people compliment us on on the quality. Do we spend more money? Certainly. Do we make less in profit? Yes. But I would rather take the Ferrari approach than the Walmart approach. Mm. No, I think that's that's really, really good. I, I, I like that. Let's talk finances there for a little bit. I know you mentioned, you know, that syndication is not or syndicating properties is not uh, a path you've yet walked down. Uh, wh- what's been your finance? I know you mentioned also private money, but how have you funded your deals up to this point? And then what does that strategy look like going forward? Yeah. So, I mean, we're like every other investor, I think, for the most part. We, uh, you know, we've used a combination of, of local hard money lenders um, and a um, private money, you know, family friend that we got connected with who funds most of our deals now. Um, we haven't done any traditional financing, conventional. That was one thing that my brother and I were like, we don't want to do because we have, you know, a, a, we own this business together and it's just complicated and you have, you know, you have to deal with your credits, you know, having these, you know, houses on your credit. So we, from the get go, wanted to use institutional money for any of our long term financing. So I think that's pretty much, you know, the gist of it for us in terms of financing. And then kind of going forward, if I find deals in Oregon, then I have all the money I need. Um, if I find deals outside of Oregon, then I'll have to explore uh, making some new connections with uh, some different um, funding sources to uh, to fund some deals. Let's talk a little bit then about the properties you currently own. Is that a, you got a 24 unit and you got a 17 unit underway right now? Tell me about those, how you found them, what the plan is, and then do you intend on staying in that kind of smaller multifamily category? Is there opportunity there that other people should be paying attention to? Um, yeah. So we, we had the seven, the 17 unit one is, is a, a whole podcast in itself. Um, we, I would, I would love to talk about that one, man. We, we called it the trail of tears for, for the longest time, um, dealing with the city and uh, FEMA. It, so I actually got that one from a wholesaler. Wow. And I had 36 hours not ideal time to do due diligence. Mm-hmm. And in all honesty, this was our my my first attempt at moving into like bigger properties. Wow. So, but the margin, oh my God, was so huge that I had to send it to my hard money and my mentor. I was like, what am I missing? Something's wrong. And they both kind of, you know, looked through things and they're like, I think you found, a, you know, a, a diamond in the rough. And so, you know, so we took that one on through a wholesaler. Most of our um, deals come from our own marketing. So, um, we're inbound only. I don't do cold calling. I hate it with a passion. Um, I'm not like the salesy salesman. I'm about building relationships and uh, building trust with people. So, you know, we do marketing so that we have inbound um, leads come in and then I work with those people. So that's where you know, I would probably say 95% of our deal flow comes from. Right. No, that's awesome. You were telling me about the 17 unit and um uh, the opportunity, I guess, the, the the opportunity you see in that, and mm-hmm. then you know how you guys took those down. I know you mentioned that with with uh, you know the, that that was brought to you with a or from a wholesaler. But what's the what's the plan going forward? Are you guys going to continue to buy in that size of asset? Oh yeah. So I mean, I I don't want to pigeonhole myself and say, oh, I'm not going to buy you know X Y Z. I'll look at um, any deal that comes across my desk and see and and look at it at its own on its own merits. Um, we are going to do, I think, fewer uh, fix and flip projects because obviously we have a limited amount of time to focus. Um, so 
in terms of not losing our deal flow is more wholesale deals to other investors. I know a bunch of people that still you know want to do fix and flip. So we're going to maybe cherry pick some of those and then uh, send out the rest to everyone else. Um, and then if I can come across some some decent small multifamily, you know, and when I say small multi, I'm looking now more like the, you know, six to 15 range. Hmm. Um, and then obviously, you know, for me, the unicorn is to, you know, start looking at the 50 plus units for um, doing syndications. Got it. No, that's really cool. And I guess both of those are just standard apartment complexes, the 24 and the 17 that you have right now. Well, we have 24 total. So we have 17 there. And then we have th like three Airbnbs, um, our office that we're going to rent out part of, and then uh, a couple of rentals in there. Man, that's that's really, really cool. I love it. I absolutely love it. When you when you look to the future, you look at the plans, you say, okay, hey, this is this is where we're going. What are what are some things you feel like you're doing in today's economy to really offset risk for you and potentially future investors? Yeah, um, I think you know the biggest thing is uh, being conservative. Um, I'm conservative by nature. I worked for value investors, so you know, being super risky was never my mo. Um, doing uh, taking calculated risk was always how I presented it to people. Um, so I think just underwriting the deal very thoroughly, um, adding in you know a bigger cushion for your contingency in case costs keep going up. Um, that caught us a little bit in the beginning when cost started skyrocketing. Um, and then uh, just being conservative on our AR ARVs on the on the you know the way down because you know I could talk to some of these sellers and they're like, well, you know, it went up. I'm like, yeah, but it's declining and I gotta look six months down the road. And six months down the road, you know, this thing could be down 10%. So I'm cutting that out now and not saying, oh, this is gonna be a you know five hundred thousand dollar property. Maybe it's only gonna be a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar property. So just being conservative, I think. But I also, you know, an advice I would have for someone is to don't sit on the sidelines either. There's opportunity. Mm. Uh, we're in an inflection point is how I put it. It's it's an odd spot to be in where sellers haven't quite realized it, but the market has. So we can get caught in the middle. Whereas I think a lot of people can get in trouble in that, in that spot. But we don't see it that way. We see that there's opportunity and it's definitely coming down the pipe. Um, so, you know, we're gearing up for, uh, opportunity and, and more acquisitions because in that down market, I'm not going to run away from it. We didn't run away. Like the pandemic hit. That's when we bought that apartment complex. I remember looking at my brother, I go, man, I don't know what's going to happen, but we're either, you know, here we go again. It's either going to be a next step or, you know, we're, you know, we're going under and have to restart and, uh, it panned out. So I, um, you know, I, when people are fearful, I think it's the Warren Buffett thing. When people, people are fear, fearful, you know, be greedy when they're greedy, be fearful. And so I see a lot of fear out there. And so people ask me, I'm like, no, we're full steam ahead. I'm just being conservative and not just taking any deal. Right. I love it. I love it. Ricky, thank you for taking the time to come on the show today. I certainly appreciate it. You've shared with us so many helpful things. I love to hear your journey going from broker to investor, your experience in the corporate world before that. Uh, you know, working uh, working for the value. Like, what'd you call it, the value? What, how'd you put that? It was a value value investor. So you yeah. know, think. Uh, I guess you know you have growth stocks, which are the, like the tech stocks, and then you have value, which is finding you know the more mature companies that the market is is you know undervaluing. Got it. No, I love that. Absolutely love it. If our listeners want to get in touch with you and learn more about you, what is the best way to do that? Uh, I mean, the best way is to probably um, check out, you know, go to our website, uh, grandbros.com. That has all of our, all the information to access, uh, to get a hold of us, get in touch. You can also email me, ricky at grandrei.com. I'm always happy to chat with people. I talk with new investors all the time. Um, you know, so I'm, I, if anyone wants to reach out, I, I would love to chat. Don't be bashful. You know, I, I know it's scary. Even I reach out to people and I'm like, God, what are they going to think? So, you know, anyone reach out. Absolutely. Love it. Thank you, Ricky, so much. We'll make sure we include all of those uh, links and contact info there in the show notes as well. But I appreciate you coming on today. Thank you so awesome, much. Sam. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.